Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this one, I'm going to be talking about how narcissists feel when you finally cut them off. Please give the video a thumbs up down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. If you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.com. .co.uk. How do narcissists feel when you finally cut them off? How a narcissist feels when you cut them off really depends on what type of narcissist you are dealing with. Aside from overt, covert, cerebrals, and somatics, I would say that there's really only two types of narcissists. There's the type of narcissist who is more jealous, possessive, and controlling. And then there's the other type of narcissist who tends to be more of a player. The player type of narcissist is typically not going to care if you cut them off. It's not going to phase them in any way. They will end the relationship the second you do, unless you're providing something to them that they can't find anywhere else, such as money, a place to stay, or sexual experiences, but they are not going to feel rejected. They're not going to feel inadequate, unacceptable or faulty. Just because you stopped giving them affection or showing concern for them, they're not going to care because they likely have many other options or they may be sociopathic or psychopathic and they just don't have any interest in human engagement or connection unless they envision you as their ideal love. Because that is why many sociopaths and psychopaths are quite comfortable being alone. They are holding out for their ideal partner, but most narcissists are not like that. And instead they are very jealous, possessive and controlling because they don't have many other options or they can't find anyone else on your level. However, they do have an inflated ego and a sense of pride, so they're not going to be vulnerable and they are unlikely to reveal their emotions to you. But narcissists do feel. They do experience emotions and sensations. Sociopaths and psychopaths are higher on the spectrum, so they're not going to be as sensitive or they may barely feel anything at all. But narcissists do feel. They can't experience genuine positive emotions, but they are more sensitive to negative emotions than you or I. So when you cut the narcissist off, they will feel hurt. It will cause emotional pain. And they will feel like you are being unkind and unfair to them. Because despite what they may have done to you, they still feel entitled. They are very arrogant. So they believe they should have whatever they want, which really works against them if you decide to cut them off. And it creates a conflict within themselves, a battle in their own minds. Because on one hand, they think they're the best thing since sliced bread, but in reality, you're not wanted to talk to them, which causes them to feel pain, shame and regret. The player type of narcissist will not experience those emotions. Instead, they will think there must be something wrong with you because elsewhere they may be receiving a lot of validation. So if you're not validating them or wanting to be with them, then they will assume you to be defective in some way. But other narcissists, especially those who are covert, are likely not to be receiving sufficient validation or supply. And that is why they are covert. The overt may receive more of a sting initially, but it's going to have more of a lasting effect on the covert narcissist. Because while some overt narcissists will openly discuss their feelings, the covert narcissist will bottle it up inside because they do not want to feel their feelings. They do not want to deal with the shame. They do not want to accept that you rejected them. So they will not accept anything that they have done to you. They will play pretend. They will play make-believe. They will engage in a manistive play because it's just too painful for them to accept. 
So they will refuse to take accountability. And that is why they never heal. Because they can't accept what they've done. They can't accept what they've caused, what they're a factor in, and what they're responsible for. They would rather create a false narrative about you and just move on to someone else. Because it's too painful for them to reflect on their shame. So they will try to replace you as fast as possible. And they won't care who it is. They will downgrade. They will set up a low-hanging fruit. As long as they don't have to be alone with their feelings. Because when you cut them off, they will be constantly ruminating. And it will be very painful for them. Because they're ashamed of what happened. Which is why they will do anything they can to avoid reflecting on their shame. And if they can't find anyone they're willing to settle for, then they will obsess over trying to get you back. But that's only if they think that they can. If you've made it very clear to them that they can't have you or be with you, then they're not going to obsess over you. Unless they're completely delusional and they have no other options. Or if they do have other options, but you're the best they can find, which is based on superficial things or the potency of your supply. But the more rigid you are and cut them off and in removing your emotional reactions, the more they're going to hate you. Because then they know you're not going to take them seriously anymore. So what have they got to lose? But everything they do is intended to affect you. So when they see that it's not affected you anymore, you win. Because if they can't affect you, they don't get that sense of elevation at your expense. So then they continue to feel how they already felt. They feel how they were trying to make you feel. Because they were unable to deflect their feelings onto you. So then their shame takes over them. Because then they feel like they've lost. They have the same mentality as a two-year-old child. They think in black and white. In terms of winning and losing. But they're not really trying to win. They're just trying to not feel like a loser because that's how they already feel. And their idea of not losing is to have as much access to you as they possibly can, to have control over you and to get reactions from you. So if they no longer have access to you, they can no longer get those reactions from you, which means that they have lost control. It means that they do not have the power to influence and direct your behavior and the course of events. And when that happens, some of them will run away like a dog with its tails between its legs. But other narcissists will try to find other means of control because they're very jealous. So they will feel like they're missing out on something they believe they're entitled to. They will feel empty without your emotional reactions. And they will become paranoid. Because they will assume that if you're no longer interested in them, then you must have someone else. They will assume that someone else must have outmanipulated them. Someone else must have done a better job at you than they ever could. Which is actually one of a narcissist's greatest fears. Because they understand that there is a hierarchy of manipulation. They crafted their skills through observing other manipulators who they deem to be greater than themselves. Whether in person or in movies. And the thought of someone coming along and out manipulating them is a very painful thing for them to accept. Because all they really have are their manipulations and illusions. And this is why they're so possessive and controlling. It's why they devalue other people to you. Because they understand that they are not the best in their field. They know there's other people out there who could manipulate you in ways that they never could. And that is why when you cut them off, they will assume that a greater manipulator has taken you away from them even though that may not even be the case. But once they've got that idea in their heads, they can become very dangerous because they will attempt to identify what it is that another manipulator might want from you. And then they will set out to destroy whatever they think that may be because they view you as an extension of themselves. They feel entitled to you. So in their minds, if you're with someone else, then that person has stolen you from them. That person has stolen their property. Or even if they think you're alone, that means you're withholding yourself from them. And that is something you're not allowed to do. Because once they've been involved with you, they believe that they own you. 
even if they've already moved on to someone else. In their minds, they can do whatever they want because they're special, unique and superior. But you can't move on because you're beneath them. So you're not meant to make any independent choices or decisions of your own. You're meant to listen to them because in their minds, you belong to them. They own you. But when you cut them off, they lose control of you because they no longer have direct access to you. So they can no longer direct your behavior, which means that they will resort to other means of control. So that at the very least, they can determine your behavior and then influence the particular way in which something will happen or in which you will behave, which isn't ideal for a narcissist, but it's better than having no control at all. And they will achieve this control by stalking you to where they may show up at your house or at your job or whatever they think you're going to be because they are predators and predators stalk. They will illegally follow and watch you. They will harass and persecute you with unwanted and obsessive attention as a means of regaining their power and control, which is why you do need to be very careful because stalking is a very serious crime. It's against the law. And if they're willing to break laws in order to get to you, then that means you're dealing with a very dangerous person. You're dealing with someone who has an addiction to you. So when you cut them out, of course, they're going to react negatively. They're going to want to cause injury, pain, harm and loss to you. Because in their minds, you've already caused that to them by cutting them off. So now they feel entitled to harm you. But if you're lucky, they may just ghost you. Because they're so full of themselves, they may see that as a punishment to you. So they may just leave you alone. And then they may try to develop a relationship with someone else off of their unprocessed feelings of pain and shame that they never resolved, which of course isn't going to last for long. Or it's going to be very toxic and dysfunctional, which means that it may just be a matter of time until they come back to you because you are the source of their pain. So even if they try to move on, they're still going to be watching you and thinking about you. Because they feel so much shame that is associated with you, they know you're not happy with them. They know they weren't good enough for you. And that is why you decided to cut them off. So from that point on, everything is going to be your fault. And they will project their feelings of bitterness and resentment onto you. They will always feel like they were treated unjustly because they're not looking at themselves or what they did wrong. Everything's just all about you and how you could have done more. So they're not taking accountability, which perpetuates the shame that they're trying to avoid reflecting on because it's too painful for them to deal with it. So they don't deal with it. And instead they deflect it onto you by blaming you for everything, which is why you need to be very careful because they have a mental illness. So when you cut them off, you never know how they might react because they're mentally unstable, which means that they have an inability to think rationally and make simple decisions. They're unable to cope with normal daily stress. So they may react with aggressive and violent behavior. They may do things that you haven't seen before, things that you never thought they would do, especially if you've never seen them do it before. Because those are the types of people who will do it they lack the inner strength, the resilience to be able to cope with stressful situations, which is why they can't open up. They can't even accept that you've rejected them. They can't accept the emotions that come along with being rejected. They lack integrity. They lack honesty, uprightness and honorableness. So they're predisposed to how psychotic breaks in which they may have an episode where they lose touch with the regality because they're in denial. So they have difficulty distinguishing between what's real and what isn't because they're terrified of their shame. They don't want to experience it. They'd rather continue to live in their fantasy world where they can be powerful and superior, which is why they may start acting aggressive and violent, even though deep down they're cowards. And they actually lack the courage to endure dangerous and unpleasant things, which is why they tend to hold on to their shame instead of confronting it and healing. So it's just another one of their performances where they want to prove to you that they're tougher than you think, 
which is why you need to be very careful because they are extremely insecure. So when they want to prove their power or worth, they will really go all out. They will be very dramatic and it can often be very sudden and striking because they want to make an impact. They want to feel powerful in a situation where they would naturally feel powerless and helpless, which is why some of them will have a psychotic break and come after you, not because you've taken anything from them, but because you're unintentionally reminded them of how they're not your God or your master, and they actually have no ability to control you at all. At least not without directly affecting you and seeking to harm you, because by that point, that's really the only thing they can do. When they're forced to reflect on the unwelcome fact that you're not an extension of them, and that you're actually a separate per person with your own feelings and needs, that they, are, uh, that they are unable to fulfill. And that is what causes them more shame than anything else. The fact that they know they weren't good enough for you. Because if they were good enough for you, then why would you choose to separate? Why would you pull away? Of course they discount the abuse. They don't consider that. Because they know that is their vulnerable point. They know that it doesn't justify them having access to you. Because if you desire to cause harm or to neglect someone, then you're not deserving of them. And at some level, they understand that. Because our value is determined by what we give and provide, rather than what we take or consume. Which is why when you cut them off, they will feel worthless and insignificant. And then they will seek to destroy you. They will smear your name ruin your reputation, get you fired from your job and sabotage your support system. Because otherwise, they're left to reflect on the fact that they're no good. If you can move on and things get better for you, and they're still stuck in the same situation, then that means that it is them. And they know that. It's what would naturally happen because, of course, they're the narcissist and you're the victim. So they have to invade your new life and destroy everything to create the appearance that it's you and not them. This is what narcissists do. It's perception management and they are master manipulators. So they know how to turn the tables on you. They've done it to people before you. But as you've already witnessed, it is them who cannot live a stable life. They're the ones who lack the strength to stand and endure. They're just trying to reverse the situation onto you, which is why the last thing they want is to see you move on and become successful, whether it's in your career or relationships, because that triggers their shame. It reminds them that they weren't good enough to accomplish what you did, but they're not going to implode. They're not going to take themselves out. They're going to take you out. Because while they may not be good people, they're not built to survive. They're constantly in survival mode. They already abandoned themselves a long time ago. Some narcissists even sacrifice their own kids to maintain their image. Because all they care about is themselves. Which is why if it's a battle between you and them, they will always win. The only way that you will win is by not playing the game. You have to cut them off because they're the predator and you're the prey. You're like a snack for a narcissist. So they feel no remorse. They feel entitled to devour you in order to save themselves. So you have to protect your peace. You have to find your freedom from, from disturbance because they are hardwired to destroy you. And it may not seem fair because you don't want to fight. You just want to move on with your life. But narcissists do not care about fairness. All they care about is power and control because they were raised in scarcity. So they will try to harm you. They will steal from you. They will sabotage you. They will drag you through the courts. They will mentally exhaust you. 
they will do anything they can to try to weaken and disempower you. Because otherwise you would naturally become healthy, happy and successful without them. So they're just going to keep attacking you again and again. But not all narcissists will become evil and crazy when you try to cut them off. Some of them will try to rekindle the relationship. They will return to the love bombing phase. Because it works on you. They know you just want things to be normal again. So they will pretend to listen to you. And they will start doing what you want them to do. But that's only so that they can blind you from what's going to come next. Because once they've lured you back into the love bombing phase, they're about to put you through the ringer all over again. And they will run you through the cycle as much as they have to until they've completely destroyed you. And there's no signs of life, no positive responses, no attempts to move or recover. And only then will they leave you alone because by that point their job is done. They love bomb you only to later destroy you because that's exactly what happened to them in their childhood. They trusted someone, they were vulnerable, and it got them into trouble. So then they learn that they have to fend for themselves, and that anyone who tries to evoke vulnerability or love is the enemy. So they must be consumed and then annihilated. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.